A professor of geography, our guest today commenced his political career in the 80s, after which he was elected senator in 1983. He has served in various capacities under the military and civilian dispensation and remains relevant in Nigerian politics till date. You meet our guest after this break. This is the Sunday interview. I'm Jacqueline Jado. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Our guest today is a scholar, a social mobilizer. He chaired the Mass Mobilization for Social and Economic Recovery, MAMSA. He's a former Minister of Agriculture and Natural Resources, former Minister of Information and Culture, former Minister of Cooperation and Integration in Africa, and former Minister of Information and National Orientation, also a PDP chieftain. The list is almost endless. He is Professor Jerry Ghana. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on the program. Thank you very much. Let me ask this question. Yeah. How different is Professor Jerry Ghana, the lecturer from <laughs> Professor Jerry Ghana, the, the politician? Essentially the same person, uh, because part of what I've tried to do in life is to maintain integrity, uh, not to have a double life, not to have a double personality. So uh, uh, as, a, a, as a lecturer, I, I enjoy my students in teaching in, uh, in, and uh, uh, relating with them excellently on the basis of integrity and honor and so on, and uh, of communicating with them, of networking. So I've remained the same in politics. Mm. Politics really is also networking. Mm. It's also about integrity. And Although, of course, these days, funny enough, they don't appreciate core values anymore mm. as we used to do mm. when we entered into politics. Mm. Uh, so what was growing up like for you? Where did you grow up? Where were you born? Oh, yeah. Well, I, I, thank, I thank God I, I came up from a very rural setting. I said, thank God because he gave me, you know, fundamental values mm -hmm. that are very, very humane. Uh, I, I, I was born in the village of Busu. Busu is uh, near Doko in Bida. We're not too far from Bida. Okay. So okay. The, Bida. Bida the, is in Niger yeah, State. Yeah, Bida is in Niger State. And uh, we... Grew up on uh, on a rice farm, and uh, my father was a rice farmer, very very good rice mm. farmer. And so I know how to grow <laughs> rice very well. <laughs> then I went to school, and uh, because uh, my father were first generation Christians in my area, so they knew the value of education. They okay. did uh, mm. adult education to okay. be able to read the Bible okay. and uh, pray and mm. take church services. So uh, when we came on. He made sure that his all his children, mm. you know, went to mm. school, mm. valued education immensely, mm. valued light of God, reading mm. the word. But his main essence in sending them to school that we'll be able to read the Bible. Mm. <laughs> but mm. then we're going beyond uh, reading the Bible, uh, reading obviously, to mm. do other things. Although that remains the core. Uh, so uh, then I went to uh, primary school, not too far from my village. Then the senior primary school in Bida. And then I went to, uh, at that time, Niger Provincial mm. Secondary School, Niger Government College, Bida. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, that's why I had the privilege uh, of uh, having uh, uh, school uh, mates then, but uh, certainly they were elders and the head boys. Mm. General Ibrahim Babangida okay. was our head boy in school. Okay. Oh, General wow. Salam Abu Bakr, mm. he was our goalkeeper. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> and mm. so many of them, mm. the fascinating thing is that they are set, the uh, head of us mm. went into the army. 
Oh, okay. So, so many generals. Oh. The next set, our own set, about two, three sets uh, went, into the went, academia. went into the academia. <laughs> so we are professors, we are generals. <laughs> Who were some of your earliest influences? People that you would say influenced you as a child and, you know, have formed the man that you've now become? At various levels. At the family level, my father. My mm. father was a godly, tremendous person of character, very hardworking, very truthful. And uh, also, his own is that uh, people matter more than things. Mm. That was his philosophy mm. of community mm. living. Mm. And he cared for people. And I really thank God for him because I enjoy that now in politics. Mm. People matter more than things. He will give people attention and you try and help them. So my father really uh, influenced me tremendously in, mm. in terms of relating with core values. Mm. Making you, you mean. Absolutely. Mm. And also relating with God in a very mighty way. Uh, then, of course, in the primary schools, you know, my in secondary school, I had uh, a very tremendous influence from uh, one Mr. E. A. Onimole. Hmm. He came from Lagos, but, uh, you know, he was all over in the northern <laughs> states there. He was wow. in Diamond College, Kefi, hmm. and that. He went to so many places. Then he took very serious attention to me hmm. and brought me up like a son. Hmm. Then, of course, at the university, Professor Isha Audu, mm. my vice chancellor, mm. became a role model. Mm. A role model of excellence, of intellect, of integrity, of honor, of mm. human, you know. Mm. But I, I love him so much, I named my first son. <laughs> <laughs> Firstly, after him. All, all right, so cl climbing the ladder politically, yeah. would you say you had political mentors, people that you looked okay. up to politically? Coming to politics now, uh, uh, basically, uh, in, in politics, uh, I entered politics uh, through the Nigerian People's Party in those days during the Second Republic in 1982-83. And the great Zik mm. was really uh, a, a tremendous you know, influence uh, on us because we, we appreciated uh, the profundity of thought, uh, the tremendous values, the, the articulation of ideas, the emphasis on programs, his, uh, his view of man within the setting. Zik was tremendous. Then, of course, Chief Solomon La, uh, mm. is, uh, of a blessed memory like Zik, was a tremendous influence because he taught me the power of not giving up. Be sustained, strong, mm. principled. Mm. Chief Solomon La was strong. Then Elijah Boko Remy also greatly influenced me because he had a tremendous anointing to relate with the crowd. Mm. <laughs> he was charismatic. And in politics, he also be also charismatic. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was a tremendous influence in terms of addressing crowds and making sure the masses are moved. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, growing up, did you have any kind of nicknames, funny nicknames people <laughs> called you? <laughs> yeah, you're laughing. I'm sure there's a very funny one there. <laughs> no, 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 I won't tell you. <laughs> but they're all good ones, actually. Mm -hmm. I grew up to be a very nice person. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Basically, the, the next name in my own mm. language will mean he's so nice, you won't touch a fly. Oh. You know? But then they took advantage of me because of that. <laughs> I can't so, imagine. So later on, uh, in the higher school certificate, uh, you know, I said, no, no, no. I have to. Uh, you have to wear thick skin. I'll be tough. In, in, how do you get away from politics if you wanted to, you know, just relax? What do you do for relaxation? How do you get away? I love relating with fellowships in my church. Uh, I'm a lay preacher. Mm. And uh, so it's not relaxing, but really it's another mm. thing. Mm. And it's a tremendous way of also restoring my joy, my peace, my, you know, other things that are. So I have that, uh, I, I, I love uh, the tremendous uh, attributes of being a, a, a gracious person, raising other people, relating them in fellowships, in praying, in studying the word of God, in singing. Mm, uh, don't mm. tell me to sing. <laughs> <laughs> Do you enjoy music? I enjoy music. What kind of music? Uh, all range, because but uh, uh, essentially classical mm. uh, and uh, you know worship songs. So let me ask you, you know, what inspires you? Mm. What, how do you draw your inspiration? Mm. Where do you draw your inspiration from? Essentially, from the Lord, the Bible, the Word of God is a tremendous source of inspiration. God inspires, He speaks to us in His Word through the Holy Spirit. So my most profound way of inspiration is really 
listening to God in his word, in my prayers, in my meditation. Mm. That is the primary area. Mm. But of course, beyond that, you also have philosophers who uh, have affected one's social thinking and political thinking. I love reading. I have a wonderful library. Mm. Sometimes you get by myself to, to read. So, and then of course, you listen. Uh, uh, it's very, very important to listen to others. Uh, sometimes uh, it's, a, it's amazing how ideas come as you listen to people talk or sing or do something. Mm. All right, tell me, how did that journey into politics go? You know, from you're moving from the academia into politics, mm. how did it I go? I was hoping you won't ask. <laughs> 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 well, essentially, it was uh, a peer group, not pressure this time, mm. but thinking and praying together. The Faculty of Social Sciences, which I belong to in Amadou Bele University, with friends like Bala Usman, mm. Adiaya, and a number of others, were deep thinkers. You know, we, we were thinking tremendously about the nature of our society. How do we transform it? How do we, uh, um, you know, lead the way to really, as it were, move it to another level? Mm. And that was a really very robust kind of debate. That's as a, the intellectual level. And then, of course, I had a strong fellowship. <laughs> Uh, so some of them at that time were younger priests are now bishops, archbishops, but they were in our team. Mm. And uh, they were my prayer partners. So you can see there was an intellectual mm -hmm. you know, group uh, debating the ideas, the issues. You know, We were you know, those socialists. Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. And uh, some like Bala were basically Marxists. And, uh, but the ideas really were very profound. Then my spiritual group, the praying group, also thought that we must influence society. Mm. The opportunity came, uh, or the challenge came uh, in the Second Republic. Uh, then we have to mobilize our people, first of all, to the Constitutional Conference uh, in 1977-78. Uh, then, of course, uh, in 79, the new Constitution. Uh, we were the intellectual group that uh, informed the formation of the Nigerian People's Party. We didn't go in, mm -hmm, but we were mm -hmm, pre mm -hmm. preparing most of the papers, most of the program, most of the manifesto. Then in 82, uh, my colleagues praying with me said, ah, <laughs> Jerry, you have to get <laughs> you in have there. To contest. And uh, that was the year that I was actually going to on sabbatical to mm. a beautiful university in, 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 in Canada. And I wanted to go. <laughs> oh. But then uh, they resolved that it's good for me to really get back and to go to be governor, mm. you know. So really, I went to challenge, uh, to you know, become a candidate for mm. governorship in my state. But uh, uh, an older person, because I was talking about in my 30s then, I wasn't 40 yet, um, an older person uh, who was the permanent secretary because of the realities of the local politics, they felt he should be the governorship candidate. So I, I went to the Senate. Mm. You've held various positions mm. in, in, in the yeah, country. Yeah. Which would you say you found most challenging? Minister of Information. Because mm. the Nigerian public is a very, very tough public. Every outing is an examination. Mm. Every sentence is a, is a judgment. Mm. You have to watch what you say, when to say it, how to say it. Where to say it? Well, in trying to do your job, did you feel at any point that, you know, you were being misinterpreted? A lot, uh, you know, especially in the Ministry of Information. Uh, people don't remember contexts mm. of what maybe you make a, made a statement. They forget about the context, uh, the context of where, you know, mm. when you made it and what led to it. Mm. Mm -mm. This is what it says, so you have to be explaining. And then Nigeria is so full of rumors. You know, and all sorts of what uh, I think another president is calling fake news. Mm, <laughs> mm. And it can be very, very tough. But, you know, once uh, you are truthful, the truth will set you free. Mm. If whatever you're doing is truthful, you, you find that, in fact, it explains itself. So I never really, as it were, uh, had the kind of challenge that I would regret. It was a challenge, but I always had a tremendous time with it. That, most Nigerians remember me most mm. as Minister of Information. Yeah, although obviously. I've gone to other mm -hmm, ministries, mm -hmm. uh, they remember me as also Chairman of MAMSA. Yeah. Although I've done so many other mm -hmm, things after mm -hmm, MAMSA. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, uh, it means that 
the that level of impact and communication was effective. Mm. And I thank God for it. Mm. All right, we're going to short break now. When we come back, we'll be speaking, still be speaking with the former minister for information and orientation and PDP chieftain, Professor Jerry Ghana. Stay with us. <laughs>